I had a quick idea as far as how to do remote ID in a totally self-sufficient system. And what I finally decided to do or give a first try. Most people are familiar with coin batteries, the ones that you throw away, but there's actually a uh, lithium rechargeable one that's a higher line voltage. So supposedly this can work off a 3.3 voltage uh, input, which actually I did verify that in my testing. Um, but I, I didn't want to run it that thin as far as the capacity amount of time between charges And so my thought was to do two two batteries So this of course is going to take it up towards 8 volts when it's fully charged and then it'll dissipate down um, Once you get below 6 volts or 3 volts per battery um, it, It'll stop performing correctly or just actually no it didn't shut down it just it started to kind of weird on the Illumination and that'll make more sense here in a moment. I, I got this which comes with a charger and I'll put a link in the description. So uh, Let's see the extra batteries are here. So it's got um, Slow charge and a fast charge. It's USB. So you just plug it in and so this is your charger You know if you've got FPVs you have different kinds of chargers anyway, like for example I need a different charger for this battery for my goggles another battery then you've got the batteries in your controller having specialty chargers is, is nothing new and to me this this is pretty simple to use pretty easy to use and they charge pretty fast these are cases that i printed from the stl files and i probably should have said at the outset so this is based on the flight test remote ID module so if you're not familiar there's two ways that you can comply it can be on board your system, such as if you have a DJI Mini 3 or Air 3 or Air 2S. It's built into your firmware. Your drone with an update can be compliant. But if you've got something that you know that you built, or let's say an older uh, Mini, so like for example, uh, this guy, there's not going to be an update for it. So I can attach something that's self-contained onto any drone, and if you're recreationally flying it's assigned to you not to the specific craft with that said i wanted something that, that was all one piece so that's why i said i've got the rechargeable batteries i found for about nine dollars i could buy a five pack of these cases um, this board was originally 120 it's now on sale from flight test um, for i think right around 90 uh, maybe just a little bit above that and this is a hard hard mount so I've been playing with this and then I've been playing with a flexible mount and their designs come with two just the enclosure for the cover and it has cutouts um, for where the wires come out and for the plug this is the version with connector there's a separate version where um, you have pins here that you solder onto like those so you can also use the GPS out from the GPS unit with your flight controller for like uh, return to home and things like that. I've got the flexible ones, which I think I'm not going to go that route. Plus, I think I was dealing with some moisture issues um, when I was printing these, so I'll sort that out later. This is a hard case. Uh, I went into something called Tinkercad, and I created something longer. And the reason why is because <clears throat> my thought was what I'd like to do is put the cover on there and then make this part of what I strap down whenever I strap down the battery. So it's just kind of a little mock-up of how I see it ultimately ending up. And then I could also strap this to the top of my Mini 2, um, which now I can only fly recreationally. I cannot fly a PAR-107 um, because it does not have remote ID. And there's no Frias anywhere around me. So we've got this control board with their design. It snaps into these little standoffs. That holds it. I don't want to snap it in there, but uh, that would snap in. And then this light lines up with that light. Like that. The nice thing about this case is it holds the two batteries and even has an on-off. And with these two batteries fully charged, I got an hour and 40 minutes out of it. So with this on off switch, when you first turn it on, you're going to get the red light and it does have an onboard battery. So if you've had it on recently, it caches the GPS, the almanac data that it's downloading. So it should link up faster. 
but it is perishable. So, it, you know, I just turned it on about three or four minutes ago and within a minute it went green. In the past, if I turned it off and then turned it right back on, like, well, you know, within 30 seconds. Okay, so it is a little bit faster still. So that's the GPS unit. And just to give you an idea, this is supposed to be like 10 grams. So with the case, with the batteries, we're at 27 grams. So this is the approach I'm gonna do. Um, I'm still working, like I said, on a different case. And uh, so hopefully here soon I'll have a video where you can see everything completed, but it's just an idea. Of course, I'm not gonna do something like this. This is just temporary. Um, what I'll do is I'll just have these wires go um, into this plug directly. I'll just solder them and use some heat shrink. Um, so it'll end up being a little bit lighter than 27, maybe 26 or 25 grams um, once I tighten all this up, kneading it. Although if I make the case a little bit bigger, who knows, maybe that offsets the wire weight. But 27 grams total, it's all one piece. I actually walked around with this with a remote ID tracker. It does jump around. Um, there's a review that Joshua Bardwell did on this unit where it was bouncing around a bit. I had kind of the same performance. Um, but I would say like one in every four or five updates was pretty close. Um, the irony is the Wi-Fi uh, location finder was actually more accurate than the GPS finder. So I don't know what's the cause of that. You would think this with a integrated unit and me walking, which is very slow, that it would be more accurate more often. But anyway, for some people, that's a good thing if it's not totally accurate. But just one other thing to consider. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.